All right, so this is the last step before using the tank sealant uh, on the trailing edge. So before that, I'm going to rivet the uh, shear clips here to the stiffeners on the right rudder skin. And for that, I'll be using these LP4-3 blind rivets and blind riveting tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So the first thing I kind of discover here is it's actually a little bit of a tight fit with my um, blind rivet squeezer up against the skin and stupidly right here I bear down against the skin and when it pops I pop a little dimple uh, or pimple into my skin so that really bums me out and you know it's yet another tiny little cosmetic uh, issue to mark a lesson learned and from then on I use this foam rubber and I really just I rotate the head of the squeezer so that I'm not really bearing down on the skin but you know this Control surface skin is really thin and really susceptible to that kind of thing, and you know I just should have been more careful. or should have thought about what would happen when the when the pop rivet let go. So in this one, I can't fit the Clecos in from the bottom, um, and they'll be in the way, but uh, no problem. I just go ahead. And, I actually used a rivet in backwards to hold the second hole aligned, uh, and then go ahead and squeeze it. And up top, uh, I put the rivets in from the bottom, you know, face head with the, with the factory head facing down. I checked the manual, no, no reason not to do it that way. That was the way it fit with that top rib half in the way. And that's pretty much it. This was all uh, really straightforward. So after this, um, later that evening, on to the tank sealant on the trailing edge. So I used the tank sealant that comes in like a caulk tube kind of thing. I bought it from Vans as well as a, you know, a caulk, caulk gun type squeezer. But you still have to mix it up. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. It's a bit of a workout. 50. Remove the cap. So yeah, it's a really interesting contraption really because you know it's still a two-part mix, uh, but all self-contained inside this caulk tube. So there's actually like a cylinder within a cylinder and a little uh, thing you use to inject the one to the other, and then the plunger that you saw me pumping there uh, that you pump and twist to mix it all up, uh, and then it just goes into a caulk gun. And the caulk gun I also bought from Vans because I wasn't sure if, it, if the tube was going to fit into a regular caulk gun. It turns out it would, just barely. The plunger um, in the caulk gun I have would have barely fit up inside of that tube. So uh, I'll probably use it next time since that other one is a little bit flimsy to be perfectly honest. But uh, so I went ahead and squirted the stuff out. Uh, it's still a very thick material, so you have to squeeze it out and then smear it around with a popsicle stick. At least that's what I had to do. Uh, put it on both sides of the trailing edge wedge and then uh, a few Clecos to hold it in place on that lower skin. And then lay the top skin on top. And uh, while my wife holds it up there, I reach in and blind rivet the two stiffeners together near the back or near the trailing edge, and then uh, rivet the stiffener to the shear clip uh, closer to the leading edge. No real issue here. I actually had that pink foam rubber banded to my squeezer because I was obviously worried I was going to make little pimples uh, in my skin again. Uh, but it turns out that wasn't an issue at all, and I took it off pretty quickly because it just got in the way. Uh, with my wife holding the skin up out of the way, uh, I didn't, you know, you didn't bump into it at all, so that was no big deal. Uh, so other than that, this went pretty smoothly. So I guess nothing says love and devotion to the project like a little tank sealant in your hair. So here, uh, comically I suppose, I can laugh about it now, but I actually for a little while there had a Clico and a pair of Clico pliers trapped within the structure. 
so what I did, I, I was clecoing that last stiffener and shear clip together uh, from the top, which means I had the, the cleco and the pliers up in there, and I cleverly left the pliers on the cleco because I knew once I put that first rivet in, it was going to be tight to get them out. It was going to hard, be hard to reach up in there and get that cleco out. Well, once I put that rivet in, I almost couldn't get up in there and you know squeeze the pliers and, and pull the whole thing out. But uh, anyway, I got it, obviously. Uh, so here I've clecoed the whole trailing edge back together. Um, there's a cleco in every hole, every kind of alternating. Every other one is you know up and then sticking down where you can't see it. And then I go ahead and I rivet this uh, the bottom rib to the to that skin with the squeezer. Uh, I, the video ran out before I did the uh, the last blind rivet uh, in the very last hole. That one you have to start squeezing the rivet a little bit before you fully push it flush, but um, you know the plans describe how to do that and it was actually no problem at all. So here I have the whole thing weighted down and uh, just letting the sealant cure for a couple of days.